with over a hundred different characters spread across multiple iterations and spin-offs. The King of Fighters series is in no shortage of amazing and iconic female characters. No matter what you like in a girl, you can be sure that you'll find your dream waifu among them. Today, I come up with 10 gorgeous ladies that I think they are the best female characters in the franchise. Before starting, I have to precise a couple of matters. First, although there is a ranking like the other list videos, for this one in particular, you shouldn't pay too much attention to it. I didn't base the ranking on any facts or numbers, it's pure caprice. The second thing I wanted to clarify, I will not include teenage characters. So sorry Kula, Yuri, Meili fans, they are not present in this list. They're way too young for me and I don't want to have to deal with the police after posting this video. The last thing to keep in mind, this is a very personal and biased list. I am not saying that these entries are the fans favorite, although they might be, but they are my favorite, so don't freak out if you can't find your beloved waifu among them. That being said, I intend to make another version of this video based on your choices in the future. So without further ado, here's the top 10 waifus in the K-Wave series. The first entry of this list is also one of the most recent additions to KUF's roster. Luang is the secret daughter of Yamazaki and Bayonetta. Nah, I'm just kidding, that's not true. Although there are undeniable similarities, but back to topic. Luang is the new member of Kim Team. After meeting his master Gang Il during his war tour, she became his lover and joined him alongside his student for the latest edition of the famous tournament. There are two distinct sides of Luang. Outside combat, she is a very warm and friendly person, maybe too friendly, especially if you ask Kim, whom Luang loves to tease and make him feel uncomfortable. But when she fights, her attitude changes radically. She adopts her femme fatale persona and starts mercilessly crushing her opponent's necks with her feet while laughing maniacally. This beautiful cruel woman was considered to be K-Wave's 14's Yamazaki before the real Yamazaki was added later as a DLC and one look at her fighting style is enough to see why. She has a similar version of Yamazaki's snake arm except Luang uses her long legs. She is also much faster and mobile than the crazy Yakuza. Being a newcomer, we still don't know much about Luang's real intentions and motivations. Maybe she'll show us more of her darker side or how good of a waifu she can be in the next game. Either way, I hope we'll get to see her again in the future iterations. You win! Beautiful victory! Next entry is a fan favorite from the much acclaimed Garou Mark of the Wolves. Jeanette was a typical daddy's girl from a very wealthy family until she decided to rebel against her boring life and became a pirate. She formed her own crew and set off in a quest for wealth and riches. Unsurprisingly, she entered KOF 11 with Tizok and Gato when she heard about its handsome prize money. She is a very enjoyable character to play as. Jeanette has a limited control over the wind element and the techniques she managed to come up with, such as her wind projectiles and the ability to glide in the air, are more than enough to make her a force to reckon with, even if she's no Guinness, obviously. She does have other moves that are unrelated to her wind element and shows a bratty and spoiled side of her, like the time when she pulls off her shoe and repeatedly hits her opponent on the face with it until she realizes that she went too far and puts it on again, seemingly embarrassed. Jeanette is also a huge fan of Terry Bogard and considers him her first love since the day she saw an old photo of him, but considering how crowded the Lone Wolf's fanbase is, she better brace herself for the fierce competition. <laughs> Living in South Town means an everyday fight for survival. King struggled a lot to prove her worth and strength in that unforgiving city. To provide for her sickly younger brother, she had to work as a bouncer for Mr. Big, one of the crime lords of South Town. 
she pretended to be a man so she can be taken seriously by the countless mobs she encountered every day. Everything was going well until Ryo came one day to where she works looking for his kidnapped sister. He beat her and ripped her clothes in the process, exposing her secret. Then she fell in love with him because everyone knows that this is how romance starts. She is a member of the women fighters team with Mai and a third member who is usually Ryo's sister Yuri. King considers herself to be the leader of this team because she's the strongest among her teammates. However, her friends do not share her opinion about her strength, pointing that she's the leader only because she's the oldest. Needless to say, King, or anyone for that matter, doesn't like to be called old. Truth be told, I can't help but feel bad for putting her this low in the list. She is an amazing female character, but as I said in the intro, an order had to be established and it happened that I have a softer spot for the remaining waifus. <laughs> When I first saw Whip in K-Wave 99, I didn't thought much about her. As the new member of the Ikari team, she didn't have the flashiest design and her fighting style was not easy to master. Then I discovered her incredibly rich backstory. Whip is one of the most important characters of the Nest Saga. She is the first successful cloning experiment made by the Evil Syndicate. She escaped from Nest and joined the Ikari squad using their intel and resources in order to find her missing young brother Kadash. When she found out about the origins of her creation, she abandoned the Ikaris and joined Kadash for his battle against Nest. Whip inherited the memories and personality of the real Sarah in addition of her look, obviously. That's why she is considered with Kadash as siblings, even if it's not really the case. She was also the bridge that connected her edgy brother with the Ikari mercenaries and allowed them to work with each other. Although she is serious and professional most of the time, she often shows her softer side with people she cares about like Kula and Leona. Whip is one of the few characters who fight with a weapon but you would never guess which one she uses. She hides a high caliber gun behind her back and doesn't hesitate to shoot her opponent when she's pissed and she also seems that she's into some weird stuff. In her 30s, Vanessa is considered to be the oldest female character in KOF, but that didn't stop her from having a double life. She's both a loving housewife and a mother to a 4 years old kid and a badass freelance agent working occasionally under Hayden's orders. Surprisingly, her family has no idea about her other life. Vanessa enjoys her job despite being a dangerous line of work. The only drawback is having to constantly deal with Ramon's flirtations. She was first introduced in K-Wave 2000 as a member of K-Dash's team. Her mission was to arrest him once the tournament ends. Although she failed in her task, her team was declared the champions of that edition, making Vanessa the first female character to win the title of the King of Fighters, even if it wasn't really her goal. She uses a very fast and speedy style of boxing. Vanessa is one of these characters capable of translocating themselves and hard to keep up with. Her punches are so effective that she can even punch projectiles back to their senders if timed correctly. She has mean hooks and uppercuts capable to send anybody flying meters away. But she still looks very cute when she does it, especially when she seems to have hurt her fist in the process. Vanessa usually mocks her opponent's young age and inexperience. After all, she is the big sister of the roster. I know I said that I'm not including young characters, but for this particular entry, I'll make an exception. Leona is the youngest waifu on this list, but unlike other female fighters, she acts pretty maturely considering her age. Saying that Leona had a difficult childhood would be a huge understatement. She spent most of her few years amnesiac and while girls of her age went to school and spent the best time of their lives socializing and making friends, she on the other hand was trained to be a fearsome soldier amidst explosions and the smell of gunpowder. And when she finally regained her memory, she also remembered that she was the one who killed her parents and all the inhabitants of her village. All because 
cause of a curse that she still suffers from to this day. She is constantly afraid of showing her emotions out of fear from awakening the wild Leona within her and inadvertently hurting those precious to her. That's the reason why she isolates herself and rarely talks to anyone outside her close friends. Knowing all this, how can anybody blame her for being a cold introvert? And it's not like she wants to be alone. In fact, she feels lonely all the time, except when her Ikari friends are with her. Despite all this, she still has an innocent and endearing side deep within her and tries her best every day to regain her stolen life. Among all the characters present in this list, this position is held by a woman that I don't want to get any close to her. Mature is a pure villain that has no consideration for human life, yet there is something mesmerizing about this speedy cruel beauty. She was first presented as an NPC way back in K-Wave 94, pretending to be one of Ruga's secretaries. It turned out that she was a Hakishu member ordered by Guinness to keep a close eye on him. When he died, she was ordered to bring Iori to K-Wave 96. When he lost the fight, he asked her help and vices, but they betrayed him and confessed their deep hatred for the Heavenly King. However, before he died, he triggered the riot of the blood in Iori, who after losing control over himself, attacked and killed them both. But for reasons that are still unexplained, they returned to life and joined Iori again for the last two K-Wave tournaments. Being the older one of the pair, Mature likes to toy with her victims. She likes to be sarcastic and use fake politeness when she talks to her opponents. She uses her incredible speed and slash attacks during combat. She also has a similar version of Yamazaki's snake arm, but Mature uses this technique to grab and pull her enemy rather than hit him. Even though she was initially tasked to spy on Rugal, Mature seems to have taken a genuine liking to the crime boss. This can be seen in her reaction when facing Rugal in non-canonical games. I guess she found her perfect match in terms of gratuitous cruelty and villainy, and I kind of envy him. The third place of this list is reserved to another Orochi follower, but this one is superior to Mature in both rank among the Hakishu and in terms of pure attractiveness. Shermi is one of the heavenly kings and has control over lightning, but it's her regular form that interests us here, because let's just say it's much safer to be around her while in this form. When she's not busy trying to summon the apocalypse and cause human extinction, Shermi is just a warm and friendly fashion designer. She is a member of a rock band titled Size alongside her companions Yashiro and Chris. Despite her delicate figure, she's pretty strong. As an agile grappler with various wrestling techniques, she can easily grab and throw anybody regardless of their size, and she does that while keeping her cool and flirty attitude. Shermi doesn't hesitate to blow kisses to good-looking male opponents and celebrate her victories with dances. However, she can also be merciless and murderous if provoked, and that even without adopting her Orochi form. But thankfully, most of the time, she just wants to have some fun and enjoy life. Everyone will find Shermi an easygoing and adorable waifu, as long as the Pikachu within her doesn't awake. So, I bet you saw this one coming. Shizuru has always been my waifu since her appearance in K-Wave 96, barely missing the number one spot, but more on that in a minute. As the heiress of the Yata clan, she was the one who gathered the heirs of the Kusanagi and Yagami clans in order to fight against Orochi and his followers. It is mainly thanks to Shizuru that the threat of Orochi was eliminated. Just how many characters you know can make Kyo and Iori work as a team and not try to kill each other? If you have watched my other top 10 lists, then you've probably noticed that Shizuru is present in most of them. And seriously, how can she not? She's very pretty, smart, strong, polite, considerate, and plays a huge role in K-Wave lore. Then why isn't she as popular as other female characters? My guess, in addition of being present in only 4 iterations, and that including the non-canonical one, 
The way she dresses may not be very attractive for the majority of players, which is a shame. Personally, this is exactly what I like about her. The focus was never on her physique, although I find her to be very attractive as I said. Shizuru is a serious character that added a lot to the overall lore, and in a channel where the story and character's background is the main focus, Shizuru is my superstar. Before getting to the number one spot, here's some honorable mentions. Are you ready? She can be your best friend, your sparring partner, and of course, your dream girl. Blue Mary, the winner of this list, succeeded in conquering the hearts of many players since her introduction in Fatal Fury 3. She was also among the much requested characters to appear in KOF, and the fans were more than glad to see her in an unlikely team composed of Billy and Yamazaki. What not to like about Mary? Beauty? Check. Interesting backstory? Check. Friendly personality? Check. Fun gameplay? Check. Amazing theme? You bet. During combat, Mary uses a Russian fighting style called Sambo, which employs both grappling and striking moves. At the start of the fight, she always makes sure to ask her opponent if they're ready, before breaking their bones and shocking them with her stun gun. How nice of her. Although she treasures her friends and enjoys being with their company, Mary is a very responsible and professional person, always considering that her work comes first. She undeniably has feelings for Terry Bogard, but she's not weird or clingy like other characters whom I won't mention. Mary's design is the best example of simple but timeless. If she reminds you of someone, it's likely because she was modeled after Dragon Ball's Android 18, another badass female character. Mary is someone who is in harmony with herself, and while she imprisoned the hearts of her fans, she on the other hand continues to live freely and independently. Now it's your turn to tell me who is your favorite waifu in KOF. As promised, I'll make another list based on your comments. But remember, only one character per person, so choose carefully. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.